thank you so much for joining with us and worshiping with us. We just pray that you feel the love of God this morning in your home, in your bedroom, wherever you find yourself. Sing this familiar chorus with us, Oh Precious is the Flow.
Just take a minute to take it all in. The love he has for you, the mercies that are new for you this morning. Oh, how you love us so. Oh, how you love us. He loves us. a shout of praise there, right there where you are. everybody. We're so glad you joined us today. The Lord's Day or 
Maybe you're watching it on another day, but whatever day you're watching, today is the day that we can give praise to the Lord, and that's what we've been doing. We're so glad you've joined us. The Bible says that praise is fitting for the upright. When we come to Jesus and we're falling and we're wounded and we're broken and we're stumbling, He sets us upright. And the Bible says that praise is fitting for the upright. We weren't created to be complainers. We weren't created to be critics. We weren't created to just speak a bunch of negative words that separate, divide, break down, break up things. We've been created to lift people up, give words of encouragement, grace-filled gifts out of our mouth to strengthen others. The Bible says praise is fitting for the upright, and that's what we've come to do today. We're not going to stop praising the Lord even when the music stops. As a matter of fact, when we were gathering together and this room was filled twice in the morning at this time in the service, actually, I, I walked around and I looked at one and I thought, what is that thing? <laughs> and, and our ushers would go through the audience and pass this, uh, this bag around and people would actually give their money, their, their tithe, their offering to the Lord. And, We've not been doing that here in our gathering because people haven't been here. But do you know what? People have been giving online since March, faithfully to the work of the Lord, helping the Lighthouse of Hope Church continue to move forward and do what God has called her to do. And we're going to continue to do that. And we wanna say thank you for all of you who are participating with us tuning in, watching, coming out to our outdoor events, our outdoor services on Sunday morning. We're going to continue on with that. We're here to worship. We're going to continue to worship as we open up the Word of God in just a minute. And so let's ask the Lord's blessing. For those of you who are going to join in right now and go to that online uh, address that tells you how that you can participate in the grace of giving worshiping the Lord with your tithes and your offerings. We so appreciate it. We want to pray a blessing over you. Let's join our hearts together for those in need in our city, in our church. Let's join our hearts together this morning for our country, for our world. We need what I'm going to preach about this morning. We all do. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you for the for the worship this morning. We thank you for the wonderful melodies that come from the hearts of these people behind me that love you, Jesus, with all their heart, with all their soul. We thank you for the gift of worship that's permeating through the, through the uh, internet, out into the homes and highways. And people are experiencing your presence, something out of this world something that this world so desperately, desperately needs. We ask that those who are giving and those who have been faithful to give, that you'd bless them. We know our times are so uncertain. The economy, Lord, is like a wave of the sea tossing back and forth. But you are God over the storm and we pray a blessing of a miraculous provision upon every man, woman, child of God that loves you and stands faithful for you and gives faithfully to the work of the Lord. We pray, oh God, a divine, supernatural intervention of outpouring and blessing on their lives. Strengthen them, help them. Bless their families, their businesses, the work of their hands. We pray you'd intervene in this world with your mighty, mighty work of healing and hope and salvation in Christ. For all these things, we give you thanks, we give you praise. We're tuning in to get into your word in just a minute. In Jesus' name, let me hear you out there, or I'm going to pretend like I do. Say amen with us. God bless you. We'll see you in the word in just a minute. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. 
Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. fade away. The prayer grasps eternity. But I'm convinced of this, God does not hear prayer. He hears desperate prayer. Prayer is not a position, what do you need? Prayer is not a position, it's a disposition. You get to the place where you'd rather sweat, you'd rather weep in his presence than laugh in anybody else's presence. You'd rather God whisper a secret into your heart that breaks you. Somebody give you the prizes that all the world covets. Prayer is almost the greatest human privilege that we have. Welcome to our series, It's Time to Pray. We've been focusing on prayer this month, and we have looked at times that the Bible tells us are times to pray, and I wanna add another one this week. It's time to pray when we need to find peace. Our world is in trouble, our nation is in crisis. The Apostle James tells us when we're under a time of affliction, we should pray, and it is time to pray. Before we go to Philippians chapter four, would you join me right now in prayer? Jesus, we love you. We set our affection upon you this day. We thank you that you are not only the son of God, but the son of man, and that you became like us so that we could become like you. We thank you that you told us you would never leave your church to go it alone in this world, but you'd be with us even until the end of the age. Open our eyes today to see how close you are to us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have an open heaven and that you know our need before we ask. Teach us to pray today and guide our feet into your wonderful pathway of peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. When is it time to pray? We've been talking about that. We said all the time is a good time to pray. But there are some times in our all the time when God whispers to us and he says, seek my face. And what we're to say back, by the grace of God, your face, O Lord, I will seek. It's also time to pray when we've experienced great blessing. I think sometimes we need to stop in our time of blessing and we need to stop and do like David. David went into the house of the Lord 
and he lifted up his voice and said, Lord, who am I and who is my family that you be so good to me? In a time of blessing, that's a time to pray. Also during times of battle, when the enemy is coming against us, when we are in a time of testing or trial or trouble or temptation, it's a time to pray. Today, we're going to talk about praying our way to peace. When we need peace. We can have peace while the world is losing its mind. We can. And I'd like to start this message out by sharing some of my favorite Bible passages, some of my most treasured Bible passages that talk about the peace of God. There are times in my life just like you when I need God's word to still and quiet my soul so often. And when I do, these passages bring me to that place of peace. My favorite one is in John 16 when Jesus tells his disciples and is telling us too, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. What a powerful, powerful anchor for us from Jesus himself. David in the psalm says this in Psalm 4.8, in peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. What a great promise to share with your children when you put them to bed at night. The psalmist in Psalm 85 says this, one of my favorite ones, I will listen to what God the Lord says he promises peace to his people, his faithful servants. Sometimes I just like to listen to the word of God being read. I'll get my phone or I'll have my computer and I'll just listen. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants. Then Isaiah said this, speaking to the Lord. He says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Beautiful words. Isn't God's word just glorious? Friends, if, if I could have one prayer granted for now and for the next generation, for your kids, my kids, our grandkids, it would be this, that they would fall hard in love with the word of God from Genesis to Revelation that they would treasure it, that it would be the treasure of all their treasures. Why? Because the word of God is the only light. It's the only true lamp, and it can guide our life from this place to God's heart and eventually all the way to the eternal city where our Father waits for us. The word of God teaches us how to pray and we're going to look at that today, how to pray our way to peace. Prayer can give us a peace that will keep us strong, even in the hardest of times. Mom, every mom out there with your little ones or those that are growing and your families are expanding, LOH Church is a place where families are expanding when a mother is stressing over the day how to do it all, how to be it all, how to carry it all. You can pray your way to peace. Dad, you're driving to or from work and the struggles that are in your mind about the pressure to be strong and be protecting and providing for your wife and your kids during these times and when answers are few and questions keep multiplying, you can pray your way to peace. My dear brothers and sisters, aging in your golden times now, when your health might be breaking down and the calendar years flip by and you wonder if your golden years will have any vigor. You wish your body would still feel as young as your spirit and you're afraid of the future. You can pray your way to peace. You can pray your way to peace. Even if the pillars of the world shake, the scripture says God's people can have peace. 
The Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians chapter four gives us a five out of five stars peace plan. A stairway to heaven's peace. you see what I did there? A stairway to heaven's peace is described in this prayer plan by Paul. It's the peace described by Jesus, the kind that you can fall asleep at night like David, the psalmist's prayer that says when you listen to God, you get peace, and the prophet's saying your mind will be settled in God's perfect peace, the peace of God. We can walk up these steps of faith and realize the embrace of our heavenly Father who is stronger than the waves of the mighty oceans and yet at the same time is as comforting as the nurturing snuggles of a love-filled mama, the peace of God. Let's listen as the Holy Spirit takes us on these steps to peace. Philippians, we're gonna back up a verse before most people would start in, in talking about uh, having peace through prayer. I wanna jump back because I think it's part of the context. It starts in verse five when Paul says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And then he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. You know what that tells me first of all? Peace is directly related to our proximity to the Lord. Verse five, he says, let yourself be of a quieted spirit. Why? Someone is close by. The Lord is near. Gentleness can be ours. A calm and quiet spirit. Why? Because the Lord is near. When I was writing this sermon, it, my mind immediately, something, there was a moment in my life where this burned into my mind. Uh, my son Devin and I were coming home one night. Um, he was about five years old, and we were, we were pulling into our driveway, and it was in the fall, or maybe the early winter, and it was very dark. Um, we had no backlighting in our uh, backyard, and we lived in a, a wooded area, and uh, we, we get out of the car, and it's pitch dark, and my son gets out, and we start up the driveway. He's maybe five. He takes me by the hand, and, and uh, so that we walk together until we get into the safety of our home. I remember when Devin grabbed my hand, I was thinking to myself, it was so dark, and I thought, I'm kind of weirded out too, buddy. I didn't tell him that. And I thought, if a bear came out of the woods, or as Jerry Seinfeld would say, Mr. Marbles jumped out and said, boo, I would have had to pick Devin up and run as fast as I could to get inside the safe zone of our home. Prayer is getting in the safe zone with our Father. You know what, our kids grow up, my kids grew up, move on. I can't grab them by the hand. And I had to learn, and I still do at times, to put my kids in the hands of God to find peace. We need to teach our children to know they can always grab the hand of Jesus because he is near. Peace has a lot to do with the proximity of the Lord in our life. Second of all, our measure of peace will be based on our measure of distance between us and the Lord. Verse six, he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, I'm not talking here about measuring the distance in uh, regards to whether I have a relationship with the Lord or not, or whether the Lord and my relationship with him is, is all that it could be or not. It's not about that. I'm not speaking about whether we're walking with him or not walking with him. I'm speaking of my perception, your perception, awareness, or lack thereof of where the Lord is. He's in our situations. Now stay with me. I, I, I've had, I gotta tell you this, to be honest with you, I've had a lifelong battle with anxiety. But by God's grace and some great friends, 
I've been learning to give myself permission to hand my burdens over to God. And I'm better at it now than I've ever been in my life, thanks to the Lord and my friends. And people who are out there who battle with this know how frustrating it can be when somebody just says to you, don't worry about it. You're like, you know what? Uh, I wish I could do that. You think I want, right? That's a tough thing. And then when you read this verse that says, do not be anxious, you think, I'm out. I hate it when we look at scripture through the eyes of ourselves and rather than understanding what they really say because sometimes we exclude ourselves from a promise that really does apply to us and this is one. Do not be anxious doesn't mean just flip a switch and just go, I'm not anxious anymore. No. It means for those of us who battle with it that we don't have to allow it to rule us. We might not be able to get rid of it but it doesn't have to be the dominant emotion in our life. We can fashion our anxiety into a prayer. Now, I mean a fashion that isn't fake. I don't mean fake a prayer. See, Jesus gave us permission to stay off the religious plastic pretend stage. I'm so glad. So that we could reveal our real self to our Father in prayer. Sometimes the thing to say is, I am really afraid, God. I know I'm 59 years old and I'm supposed to be Mr. Warrior, but I'm really afraid right now. David said that. He was a great warrior. What a relief to know that you can be real in prayer with Jesus and with our Father. And make your prayers and petitions all kinds, like David did. Have you read David's prayers in the Psalms? There are happy prayers, there are mad prayers, there are crazy prayers. Sometimes if we pray crazy prayers, we won't be crazy. Bring your best part, bring your worst part, but bring it, and it says present it to God. Now watch this. I didn't forget my point. I'm making it. Our measure of peace will be based on our measure of distance, perceived distance, between us and the Lord. God is over all creation, yet he's closer than our breath. So when we present our prayers it is vital to realize he isn't light years away from us. He is close enough so that when we present our prayers, it's like at arm's length. Present your requests to God. He's right here. It's not like putting your prayer request in one of those things at the drive through bank which sucks it up into a tube and shoots it off through the galaxies to a God who is far on the other side of the cosmos. No! Arm's length. We can have a gentle spirit because God is arm's length. Close. And knowing not only what you need but how you feel about what you need. Whether it's fear, sadness, frustration, misunderstanding, doubt, or even what Christians are, think they're not supposed to have, anger. Because he's close. And what this is saying is don't let anxiety cloud out the fact that he is close. One of my favorite times at Catalyst over the years was listening to a great author and speaker by the name of Margaret Feinberg. I was surprised in one of the workshops that she was sharing that at that time she was actually going through battling breast cancer. And she, was, she said, I am struggling my way. This is honesty. She said, I am preaching to us, teaching. She said, I am struggling my way back to joy. And then she said this, it, this is in her book, it's called Wonderstruck, Awaken to the Nearness of God. And she said this, she said, wide awake to the presence of God, I realized I had been so focused on asking why a good God allowed bad things to happen that I was missing out on the nearness of God all along. In being preoccupied with the why, I was missing the who. Moms, 
He knows. He feels. He is in the playroom. He's at the changing table. He's in the middle of the night. Dad, he's in the car with you. He's in the bank line with you. Be at peace, says the Lord, your God. Our measure of peace will be based on our measure of perceived distance between us and the Lord. Third, our measure of peace will be based on our belief in God's measure of power. I love this, verse seven. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That tells us God is so powerful. Now think of his power in this context, because here's the truth. If we were perfect, if we were perfect, we could flip a switch and dispel out of our minds fear anytime it comes, worry anytime it comes, shake off the emotions of stress and anxiety, just get rid of them if we were perfect. But we're not perfect, we're human. And it's normal to have stress and anxiety at times. But the good news is, it is that we don't have to be dominated, dominated by stress and anxiety and fear. We can pray our way into the peace of God. Even if you can't control it, though. Have you ever just had those times when you did everything and the peace of God is just seems like a stranger, and our perceptions get clouded. Here's something that I've discovered. Even if you can't control it like you wish you could, God is going to guard us while we learn how to not be anxious. The grace of God is so awesome that he teaches us. I, I'm 59 years old, I said my whole life, and I still battle. And it's like, it's like there have been better times than, than other times, and then things come out of nowhere and all that, and, and it's just hard, and you go through a season or maybe a couple days, or, and it's just hard, and it's daily, and it's hourly. Here's the good news. While you're walking through that, God is guarding us. Let the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Keep your heart. It's like Jesus standing up in the boat. The peace of God, God's power, he is able to create a fortress around our mind, our will, and our emotion. It means that he stations a sentry. It literally means in the Greek, a garrison around your mind. You're not doing that. God is doing that to keep our heart tranquil inside, secure, still. Jesus stands up in our boat. Loved ones, my friends, listen, I know this from experience. We need not fret like the world. Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. I'm close, I know, my peace I give you. Instead of shooting our prayers up to the heavens, we're reaching out our arms at length to a God who is with us, Jesus is near. Isn't that awesome? Final point, I think we also need to connect verse eight to the previous verses, just like we need to connect the, the verse before be anxious for nothing about the Lord being near and having, being gentle. With, with verse eight, he says this, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever, he's talking about a mindset. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, 
if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. We just did about a month on that, right? Here's the fourth point. Our measure of peace will be based on our meditations. Um, listen, um, meditation came from the Middle East, but it came from the God of the Middle East, the one and only God. Eastern religions still practice their meditations, but meditating on a mantra or on something, that might do something for you, but this is something else. This is talking about entering into the peace of God. And Paul tells us how. It's not an either or, it's a both. Requests, prayers with thanksgiving, meditation. Our measure of peace will be based on our meditations. Making meditation a part of our prayer life with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is an awfully great meditation. When you come before God, just start thinking of things God's done, what you have instead of what you don't have, what, what, what we have, all right? Our mind is always going to focus on something, isn't it? Dallas Willard, one of the great writers of our time, Christian writers, calls Christian meditation the great omission. But he says in the Bible, you, God, will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast. In other words, those who memorize your words, those who meditate on you, on good things, on true things, on noble things. It doesn't even have to be necessarily what we consider to be a biblical thing passage or a, a churchianity thing or Christian, but it, I mean, beauty, happy, um, anything that brings you peace, real peace, make note of it, make it your focus. The Holy Spirit is great at illuminating our lives, placing dreams and pictures, gifts of grace that we can call up, that we can pull up in our mind when we need them. What a compass. What a comfort. Make meditation part of your prayer life. A few years ago, I had a, I'll call it a dream because I don't think I'm that spiritual to call it a vision. It might have been, but I'll call it a dream. But it was good. Where I saw all of my loved ones who have gone on to heaven before and some of my friends on my front porch of the old house I grew up in, uh, in a certain part of our town. And God was sitting on the porch. I couldn't see him. But there was this light, this warm light. And I could see my friends and my dad, my uncles. And they had this look on their face. They didn't say a word, but what they were saying with their face was, he is really this good. And I remember that. And that has been a couple years now that I've had that dream and it stays with me. And there are times when I start to get down on myself, too self-hypercritical on my ways and what I do and what I don't do and all that. And the devil's right there to say, that's right, and more. There have been so many times and the Holy Spirit is so precious. The ho Listen, the Holy Spirit is real. He really is with us. And Jesus said he'll never leave you. He will never leave you. Man, and he will bring to our memory the things we've heard the Lord say, the things the Lord's brought our way, moments in life, dreams, visions, and leave a legacy of peace in our spirit. He's called the comforter, remember? Let him give you those things. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's his ministry. If it's him, it will always line up with the word. So always be in line with scripture so you can tell when God is talking to you. And then hold on for dear life. He's holding on to us. We can choose to train our minds. We can choose to control its focus on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Things when blended and braided into our brains help us to have peace. 
plant seeds of these things, make them our focus. They'll birth tranquility in us. So I want to wrap it up with this. Jesus is close. Jesus is close. Heaven is on the other side of right here. It's not way out somewhere in another galaxy far, far away. Heaven is on the other side of right here. Right here. And the one who holds all creation up and in order by the word of his power, Jesus, holds all existence together by his dynamic being will garrison our minds with peace. I wish everybody knew Jesus. I wish everybody would watch and they'd come to know Jesus. Maybe you're watching this. Here's what I don't want to happen in your life. That you live your life and then your life is over and you never made peace with God, never had the peace of God. We need to make peace while there's time to make peace with God. God was in Jesus Christ reconciling all of us back to himself, not counting our sins against us. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. When you're in the righteousness of God, you have the peace with God and the peace of God. But you and I have to make a decision whether we're gonna step onto that side. Jesus lived for 30 some years and spent probably three and a half, maybe four years ministering throughout Israel and would go into Jerusalem. He made at least three major public appearances in Jerusalem and the final one, when when finally the leaders of Israel rejected him and plotted his death, he knew it. In Luke 19, it says, as he approached Jerusalem, listen, Listen, friend, and he saw the city, he wept over it and said, listen, what if he'd be saying this to you right now? If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but it's hidden from your eyes. You know what happened to Jerusalem, Israel? He was weeping when he said it. He didn't want this to happen. He said, the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. The destruction of the city of Jerusalem in history is one of the most hideous, tragic stories of the fall of a city in the destruction of a people, in the history of the ancient world. It didn't have to be that way. There are people today, the only reason their life is a mess is because they haven't made peace with the Messiah. That's the only reason. And your way is hard. And even now, you didn't tune into this by accident. God in his sovereign way, beyond our understanding, had you tune into this to hear this message and to hear these words from God. Isaiah 27, five, the living God from his lips to your heart, your ears. Listen, let them come to me for refuge. Let them make peace with me. Yes, let them make peace with me says the Lord. How do you do that, Tim? It's easy. Jesus is on the cross. He's bleeding and dying. Not only for your sins, but so you can walk out of darkness, shadows, sorrows, isolation, 
loneliness and into the arms of a God who will accept you just the way you are no matter what you've done or what you're doing. The moment, the very moment you call on the name of Jesus, everything that he's longed that has been accumulating, the interest of his glory accumulating in your life account, as soon as you call on his name, he will pour it all on you for free. You don't earn it. It's a gift. Salvation is for anyone who would just call on the name of Jesus. Would you do that? Listen, let them come to me for refuge. Let them make peace with me. God isn't against you. You're against him. Let today change. Say, Lord, I didn't realize it. My eyes have been blind. My heart's been distracted. My spirit has been all about myself, but you've given me the gift of light and sight and the ability to hear you speak through this preacher. And right now, I'm done with that. Here I am. Can I pray with you and for every mom and dad and every person out there in these turbulent moments that God will guide our feet into the pathway of peace, that we can pray our way into peace and realize that God isn't far away. He's right here. He's right here. The Lord is near. Let me pray with you. My friend, whoever you are, you're driving in a car, you're listening to a podcast, you're watching us sometime, maybe in the middle of the night. Some day, you're watching this, you're in a situation that you, there's no way. God came right to you to say, come to me for refuge. Come to me. Heavenly Father, the times of our lives are in your hands. You created this moment, I feel it in my heart, for somebody watching. Their life is turbulent. It's almost torturous. Torturous. And yet here you are, not holding their sin against them, their failures, their fears, not pointing an accusing finger as to how they got themselves into this situation. You're just here as the Prince of Peace offering them refuge, safety. I pray that you'd give them the grace to call on the name of Jesus. And here's all you do, you say, Jesus, just say it, Jesus, I'm lost, I'm alone, but I think you're speaking to me and I'm gonna put my faith in what you did on the cross. You died for my sins and I receive that, I believe it. I ask you to forgive me because without you, I'm a sinner. I wanna be a child of God. Wash me in your blood. Jesus, I ask you to give me the eternal life that you promised to those who believe in you. And at the moment we believe, we pass from death into life. We pass out of judgment into freedom. And Lord, for everybody that asked you in, I pray that the wonderful person of the Holy Spirit would come to where they are and fill their heart, fill their soul, make their spirit come alive and bring peace. Lord, I just speak it as a man of God right now to whoever that is, whoever they are, many I just speak peace into your life, friend. I just speak the peace of Jesus into your circumstance, into your tragedy, that God will do something amazing for you because he loves you. He loves you. Be embraced by the love of God for you. He died for you, gave his son for you. Now he's gonna give life to you and bless you. For my brothers and my sisters, for our church and our friends, may the peace that passes all understanding guard your heart and your mind in Jesus Christ. Friend, I invite you for a week of prayer and fasting starting on the 20th day of September through the 26th, however the Lord leads you to do it. Many of our church, friends around, are going to be doing that. Just as the Lord leads you, by his grace, not legalism, 
But our nation needs prayer. Our world needs people who know God to stand and pray and believe. And I ask you and I invite you to join us for a week of prayer and fasting. God bless you. Be at peace. See you next time. of this world so hard to bear so many voices I hear so many choices I could choose and I will not listen to the noise to your voice for there is none like you I know there is none worthy of my soul and I set my gaze on Jesus and I fix my eyes
fix my eyes on you and all of my praise to you Jesus Thank you for giving us eternity with you for that option, Lord. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Tim's word. Lord, I pray that it would just resonate in people's hearts, that people would be open to those words, that Holy Spirit, you would flow and unlock people's hearts. And every word would just settle in. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. Amen. Amen. We'll see you guys next week.